Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we have two experiments because we're gonna be exploring the topics of energy harvesting. I was recently staying in a house that was equipped with the smart home system based on OpenHub and after exploring the system a while and asking questions about how the whole system works, I was surprised by one of the statements that uh, my friends uh, said about the house and that is that all of their switches are basically wireless so they are not connected to any wire and they are also not using any batteries and for me that was a situation where I started wondering how that could be and I explored the switches and everything that they used so i was introduced to the topic of uh, energy harvesting and i started exploring so in this video we're gonna see what energy harvesting is we're gonna do some experiments and try to harvest some energy with different ways and we will also see how we can use this energy to power different smart home projects so at my friend's house they basically had switches like this so just the wall plate with the push button out on the front uh what's interesting about them is that they can be literally mounted anywhere i don't physically have any switch now to show you so we'll have to do with the images but they could be mounted anywhere they're not requiring any wires and as you can see in the image they could also be connected to a glass which make them really interesting because Otherwise, you would not be able to pass any wires uh, to the switch that go through the glass. Now, Wikipedia defines energy harvesting as the process by which energy is derived from external sources. And as an example, they show solar power, thermal energy, wind energy, salinity gradients, kinetic energy, and also some electronics they do harvest some energy from the air of waste so there are basically many ways how we can get this energy and use it in our projects now before going any further let's define that energy harvesting is not free energy ritual because there are losses that happen within any process and free energy basically doesn't exist so with energy harvesting we are basically transforming and capturing part of the energy that is lost in a different way and we'll see in in our first demo we'll capture some mechanical energy and also in the second one we will uh, capture some heat energy and basically none of them are free energy but before trying out the experiment let me tell you about today's sponsor which is pcb way pcb way is the leading pcb prototype manufacturing but they are also a leading provider of 3d printing services that can help bring ideas to life high quality prototypes and production part can be created with precision and speed from a wide range of materials and technologies their 3d printing services include fdm sla mgf sls and dmls which can be used to create plastic and metal parts they offer industrial grade 3d printing that is perfect for creating high quality prototypes and production part their 3d printing service is easy to use and offers fast turnaround times upload design files to their website select the material and technology to use and they'll take care of the rest they offer competitive prices on all their 3D printing services, starting from only $10 for FDM printing and $50 for CNC machining. Whether a single prototype or a thousand of production parts are needed, they can help to get the job done quickly and efficiently. We'll visit their website on the link below and learn more about their 3D printing services and how they can help bring your ideas to life. So the very first way of retrieving energy and energy harvesting is by using solar cells. These are now common standard these days because we have many devices that are powered by solar. We even have farms that are producing uh, electricity out of solar energy uh, for households and entire countries even. And this process works by using the sun energy to be captured by a solar panel. And the example here, we have a buoy that could be deployed anywhere in the ocean with no other sources of power and it can stay powered on basically forever by using the solar panels uh, to charge a bank of batteries during the day that bank would be used during the night so the buoy and whatever it's measuring can be operational basically the entire time another source of energy harvesting is from vibration 
On the example here, we see a device mounted under some rail tracks where with each passing, the rail will slightly move up and down and basically generate some electricity that could then be used for powering sensors. And we could jump back on the bench and get to the first example. So what I have here is a piezoelectric disc that is connected to a bridge rectifier and a capacitor. And across that capacitor, I have an LED. I'm gonna hook my voltage meter to it. So here we have the piezo element connected with the bridge rectifier, the capacitor and the LED on the output. And we see that we have about 0.6 of a volt within the capacitor. That's not enough to turn on the LED. So if we try and introduce some mechanical energy into the system, we can see that the voltage is slowly rising. So we are basically uh, harvesting some of the energy that I'm now inputting into the system. And if we raise the voltage high enough, uh, we should be able to see the LED turn on. Yeah, I don't know how much you can see that, but the LED is glowing slightly. So if I stop tapping the piezo element, and there it goes. So basically it turns on at about 1.6 volts and it starts glowing so basically we are now converting this mechanical energy into some light usually systems like this will not have an led because led is still uh, using a lot of the energy but they would have some sort of a storage where at intervals they could use that energy to transmit some sensor data or to transmit and turn on some other electronics the larger the piezo element the more energy we could basically harvest and again there are other mechanical system where you could basically extract a lot more energy from uh, from the whole setup the next system that uh, i basically saw in person when i visited my friend's house uh, is the mechanical one on the left we have a device that is used by a company called an ocean and they are basically the ones that they they invented the energy harvesting principle for the switches basically the device consists of a coil with the permanent magnet and every actuation of the switch moves the magnet across the coil, basically reversing the polarity. And that generates changing magnetic field. And that would basically generate electricity with each press. And that electricity is then step up and used for a transmitter. So it can transmit a signal to turn on or turn off specific appliances. And on the right, you basically see a diagram on how the switch operates where the magnet moves across the core of the whole assembly and when it does so it basically reverses the magnetic field so in this case we have the magnetic field going this way but once it moves then it moves the pole of the magnet to the different area and that causes change in magnetic flux and also causes the coil to generate some electricity that we can then use in the circuit. And that brings us to the second part of our demo today where I'll be using a Peltier element. So a Peltier element has two ceramic plates on each side with some semiconductors in between. And when we apply some voltage, one of the sides would get cold and the other one would get hot. So basically it's moving heat from one side to the other. And the interesting part about Peltier elements is that we could reverse that process. So I have one that is sandwiched in between the two heatsink. The cold side, I have the large heatsink and the hot side, I have the smaller ones. So if we apply a temperature gradient to it, so if we apply heat to one side and we allow the other one to cool then we will generate enough electricity that we could spin this motor and that's uh, basically a lot so we could use this setup to power anything that ca this can be mounted to something that generates heat like a radiator or a car engine or uh, any heat stove or anything and we could use that energy to power the motor on any electronic system now let me let me hook the, the meter. So right now we have the meter measuring the voltage across the motor and the voltage across the output of the Peltier element. At the moment, we don't have any temperature gradient between the cold side and the hot side. So 
we don't have any voltage, but I will be using my lighter torch to heat up one of the sides. So if we start hitting one of the sides of the element, we could see that the voltage slowly rises. And basically the larger the difference that we have between the sides, the larger the voltage. So I'll be doing this for a few seconds. Uh, let's bring this up to some higher temperature. And hopefully at a certain voltage, we would see the motor start spinning and there it goes. And now, even though I'm not applying any more heat, we could see that the voltage is still present if we try to measure. So we have 25 on the one side and about 30 something on the other. You could see that the motor now starts slowing down, but if we introduce some more heat, then it would speed up again. So imagine if we would have this basically receiving heat from a wood fired stove and then we would have a larger heat sink to dump that heat away. We could have a fan that will be powered directly from the energy of the stove and use that energy to spin a fan that would disperse the energy throughout the room. And this is something that people usually do in their homes to try and capture and disperse that heat energy uh, throughout their home. As the voltage lowers, we could see that the motor starts to losing speed. I think it will go down, it will spin to about uh, 0.6 volts, but um, it really depends on the motor. This is a low voltage motor, so one that runs at 3 volts, and the lower the voltage of the motor, the more we can use this energy. In a different system, we could also use this energy to charge some batteries. So we could have more permanent storage and we could use that energy periodically to use it for a sensor or send any data or whatever our application could be. So I'm guessing that the motor will stop anytime soon. Uh, usually stops at around 0 0.5, 0 0.6, but now it goes a bit lower than that. Basically, this is the lowest that I've ever seen it go. And I think that would be it. Yeah, so basically there is not enough energy. And now if we try to compare the temperatures, so we have 30 on the left and about 28 on the right. So basically the temperature equalized between the sides. So the element no longer creates any more electricity. And with that, I hope that you liked this video. If you did, then be sure to give it a like. I'll definitely explore the energy harvesting world a bit more in the future where we would even possibly try to build a mechanical device to harvest the mechanical energy of a switch and use that to transmit something. If you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.